Greetings, dear viewers. Uh, well, this uh, video is uh, breaking the plaintive news that uh, Professor Norman Stone uh, has been called to the great big lecture hall in the sky, or to high table, if you prefer. Um, so I'm not a wire service, so perhaps this is more a commentary and oral obituary. Um, Professor Stone is someone I've known about since who, at least 1997. I read some of his uh, work when I was at school. So uh, was a historian of mm, incredibly wide ranging uh, expertise, really European history, but over just so many centuries, uh, very widely published. And these were not the, the dry as dust um, academic tomes, the kind which are really just um, inaccessible to the general reader and um, almost uh, fatal to somebody who's even academic minded, would really put you off the subject. No, these are lively, colourful, racy, sometimes scabrous, perhaps overly opinionated, but uh, could never be called dull. So um, Professor Stone, who was born in Glasgow in 1941, and his gravelly voice is not just Glaswegian, it's mainly because of his um, heroic tobacco consumption. Uh, he was eccentric, he was fearless, an iconoclast, rather um, phlegmatic, uh, a maverick, Anyway, his father was in the Royal Air Force, was killed early in the Second World War. And uh, one of his books I read about Hitler, I think it was, is a sort of dedication, something to do with my mother for uh, the loss that Hitler's war, war has cost, cost us both, something like that, some allusion to his um, father's uh, death. So uh, he won a scholarship, which was for the, the sons of uh, fallen servicemen, to a school in Glasgow. I can't remember which one it was. It was at um, Glasgow Academy, one of the elite schools of what was then um, the United Kingdom's second largest city. And he um, then went up to Gonville and Keys College, Cambridge, one of its uh, one of Cambridge's most ancient and distinguished colleges, where he, of course, took a first. Um, so uh, he went off to, um, to Vienna. I think he did a PhD in Vienna. No, he's not a doctor. That's it. I read somewhere he's got a PhD, but I heard from the horse's mouth. He told me he's not a doctor. So did he only have a primary degree, just possibly, because until, let's say, even the 90s, I had a couple of dons who were plain Mr. I suppose it could have been a Miss or a Mrs. But that was the end of an era. So he graduated in about 1962. And in those days, um, it wasn't that unusual. You could have an academic career without um, a higher degree. It could even be no master's degree. Of course, as the Cambridge MA or the Oxford MA, do your undergraduate degree, usually three years. And then um, four years after that, then you just get, get awarded um, an honorary MA. But um, so uh, that was that um, and didn't, ha didn't have to do these um, really tedious uh, PhD theses with all the ibits and opposites and all the rest of it. And I know things need to be properly researched, but it can just become too hidebound by conformity um, and very staid. Anyway, he... Um, uh, married a Haitian lady who didn't know it that well, and she was the, the niece of um, uh, Papa Doc Duvalier, the voodoo dictator of um, Haiti. So he had two sons with her, but um, his, that marriage um, was on the rocks after not that long. So um, uh, Mr Stone was uh, a man of exceptional linguistic talents, and as he used to say, uh, people ask him how many languages he speak, he says it depends if I'm drunk or if I'm sober. If I'm sober, 10 languages, if I'm drunk, about 15. I shan't attempt to do the, do the accent. Of course, he spoke German, French, Russian, and several others, and, and Turkish, though he, he acknowledged himself he never acquired complete mastery of Turkish. So he was professor of um, uh, modern history at Oxford University for much of the 80s. Um, and uh, he was um, known for his outspoken right-wing views. And this was when Thatcherism was at its zenith. And of course, she was a bit of a hate figure in uh, Professor Stone's hometown, and uh, he was invited to um, uh, Downing Street uh, Christmas parties, and this was when uh, um, you, let me see, Prime Ministers, I think ones who've been to Oxford, were traditionally given an honorary doctor, doctor by Oxford University, and um, Oxford University's top brass refused to give one to Thatcher because they disapproved of her policies. I can't remember which particular one they, they, they were against so much. They were so riled by that they refused to extend this uh, customary courtesy to her. So he um, uh, opposed that. He felt it was disgraceful. Anyway, he was one of the few intellectuals who would speak up for Thatcher. And so he went to uh, 10 Downing Street Christmas party and he thought it'd be hilarious to introduce um, 
uh, Roger Scruton to Gaza. Um, Scruton is um, an academic as well, who's very um, otherworldly and maybe a bit on the bland side. I've met him as well. Gaza, Paul Gascoigne, was a football player, was really the coming man of the FA and played for the English national team. And the one who famously cried in 1990 when he got a yellow card. Um, so that was that. He had a mischievous sense of humour. He married Christa, Christine Booker, well, formerly Christine something or other, in about 1981 because she was married to that journalist, Christopher Booker. Um, she's a barrister, Mrs Booker. I don't know what she's, Miss, whatever, practised under her maiden name, presumably. A criminal barrister, always looking for corroborative testimony. And um, they had a son called Rupert, who's born in, oh my goodness, I suppose about 1982. So, um, as well as being a Don, he was a journalist, well, writing opinion pieces for The Spectator. I used to um, uh, devour his stuff there, which was very witty and, and had pace. And he bore his erudition lightly. It wasn't this turgid uh, academic prose, which could really put people off. And uh, he was not shy with highly contentious opinions. He absolutely abominated Princess Diana, made no secret of that, even when that was impolitique, even when she was a secular saint, saying that she ought to be cut in pieces and thrown into the sea or something like that. It was an allusion to um, uh, classical myth. And um, Dr Andrew Gailey, who's one of the house masters at Eton, wrote, sent the article to, to Professor Stone saying, would you kindly desist from publishing articles of this nature? Because, of course, Prince William was a boy at Eton and uh, Professor Stone's son, Rupert, was about to go up you could, to the same house, which you can imagine would create bad blood. So um, Professor Stone, he didn't like the way things were going in Oxford. The um, ambiance was, was um, um, cloyingly left wing. It was just airless for someone like him. And it's even worse now, I can tell you. And um, it seemed to be mainly administrative position being a professor, not being an actual academic. So... Um, He'd always been curious about Turkey, though he said he wasn't that well clued up in it, and he accepted a position at Bill Kent University, meaning Knowledge Village, Bill Kent. He said he found about 1980, so they were desperately wanted some uh, prestige, and he was a big name they could recruit. Um, so he's known for his um, highly controversial um, opinion that there was no Armenian genocide. Now, hang on a second. He does say, yes, hundreds of, hundreds of thousands of Armenian civilians were killed in the Ottoman Empire, from 1915 to about 1918. Some of them deliberately, as in shot, some of them indirectly through forced marches and malnutrition and so on. But uh, that it didn't, still doesn't meet the requirements of a genocide. Well, I'm not sure what he's arguing about, intentionality or whatever, it wasn't centrally directed or something. Um, and I, I met him, I think just once actually, but we did discuss this very topic and says that there were several hundred prosecutions after the Second World War. So he was um, a chain smoker and he used to take get a taxi all the way to from his house in Oxford to Heathrow just so he could smoke en route. Anyway, they don't make them like that anymore. It's a minor miracle he's lived to the age of 78. Just yesterday, um, he uh, died in his sleep. Well, sorely missed. Um, they don't make them like that anymore.